Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the Grow to Save channel. It's time for a survival garden update. I have filmed this at least probably two or three other times. <laughs> I've just not had the opportunity to get it uploaded. I've been crazy busy around here. So uh, let's get started. Today is June 12th, 2020. And uh, let's see what's going on in the garden. So I cannot remember exactly how far... All right, what was the last thing that got shown? So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and just show everything. So over here, I've got poblano peppers, one, two, three. And all of these green buckets are potatoes. And 19 out of 20 of them have sprouted. And I'm actually, actually today, I am going to add dirt in these. And I'm going to do an experiment. And I think I'm just going to mark a little star on each bucket for whatever experiment I'm going to do. Um, some of them I'm just going to leave and I'm just going to put the, the new soil in. The rest I'm going to try to trim off some of these leaves and stuff. It see if that makes a, any kind of a difference in yield uh, once harvest comes. So all these red potatoes are doing well. Once again, I actually started all of these potatoes. I wasn't able to get potato seeds back when I was doing all of this. So I actually just went to Kroger, bought a couple of small bags of organic potatoes, let them sit out on the counter until they got the chits on them, and then I planted them. And now I have potatoes growing. So it's that simple, really, if any of you guys want to do that yourselves. Over here, these are all onions. I think these are white Spanish onions, and they go all the way down to here. These are some of the things that um, my neighbor and I are both kind of jointly doing this garden together, the survival garden. Uh, I live in a duplex and she lives below me. So that's also onion right there. That's the last poblano. Onion, 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 onion. You can see I'm just reusing, you know, whatever pots I could possibly find. These were actually other planter pots from a nursery from my neighbor's flowers she put out front. See, proven winners. <laughs> and, uh, and then it starts my scotch bonnets. So scotch bonnets. Uh, and actually the russet potatoes. So I have red and russet potatoes. And um, the russet go the rest of the way down. So this is the only one right here that did not sprout. And it actually kind of seems like it may... The, one of the potatoes that I put in, I remember specifically, it looked not too well. And that's probably the one. Um, but I've been actually kind of stealing dirt from there to plant around the thing. This is why it looks so messy. But uh, scotch bonnets looks like they're starting to come in pretty well. And then, over here, let me back up a little bit. These are my jalapenos. And this is, I think this is a cauliflower. It's either cauliflower or broccoli. And uh, I have these in the bigger planters uh, there. It's either cauliflower or broccoli. And one of the other there as well. So we'll find out. They, I mean, they kind of grow similar. I've never grown them before, but they look very similar. Um, of course, got a couple of strawberries. My girls love coming out here, getting these strawberries. They can get them before the birds do. Uh, I got mint right here. One of the primary reasons I'm even growing mint, it's not so much that I eat it a lot, of course. It's uh, But it's actually really helpful in trying to repel pests. So uh, that's one of the reasons that I got it. I'm actually really considering taking some cuttings and planting them amongst some of the other vegetables. Uh, this is a squash, and this is getting huge. I'm going to have to spread some of these things out. But if you see... I'm already starting to get squashes on here, which is great. Look at that big, beautiful bloom. And then I've got dill interplanted. So hopefully this dill will not go to seed or anything like that too soon and start becoming bitter because my cucumbers have not come in yet. These, um, so I've got one, two, three, four that were tomatoes that I started from seed. But once I started the hardening off method, I kind of lost track of what was what. So uh, I'm not really sure what those are going to be until they actually come in. But they're doing pretty well. This one right here was a big boy that my neighbor bought from the nursery. And as you can tell, it is a big boy. Um, looking forward to this one coming in. I think, I thought I, thought I saw one of these pollinated. So just real quick... Um, I will mention this is not about how to prune tomatoes anything like that but I will mention what I do with my tomatoes is I try to clear off the stalk for the first several inches and then of course everything that is a sucker gets torn off and then we just try to focus growth on the main stalk all the way up and 
that's pretty much how these are going excuse me um, all of them that's pretty much how I've got all of them growing even throughout the rest of the yard so let's go ahead and move on by the way these self-watering buckets I mean look how huge these tomatoes are getting plus right over here is getting a lot of direct sunlight the cayennes are right here oddly enough this cayenne after I transplanted it it's still beautiful green and healthy but it has not grown not even a little bit since I transplanted it and topped it and this has been I don't even know it's probably been almost a month at this point whereas the rest of everything is starting to bush out it's starting to grow a little bit this one has nothing so I don't know I'm gonna let it continue but we'll see over here we've got and by the way this tree this tree here and that one there basically just within the past week has finally got all the leaves on so I'm finally just now in early June able to see exactly where my shade is going to be at and that's quite all right I kind of remember from last year but uh yep these are both watermelon one two and then I got the marigold in the middle um, this over here was the three sisters method by the way these are I started to mention this in one of the last videos and I, don't, I didn't mention it in this one I know these are also the same onions as I had planted in all those individual pots over there except when I we got those from the nursery my neighbor bought them and we well I've never planted anything like that but so this one I didn't separate out any of the individual bulbs like I did for those pots over there so we got this one here and that one right there that are the same thing as well as that one and they're all just growing together so I'm really not sure what's going to happen so this was supposed to be one of the three sisters methods I did I have grown all this stuff way too close together and honestly like one of the squirrels or something over here just seems to like really hate corn I guess he's come out here and just torn down my stuff several times over I've had to try and regrow you see something came out here and just nip the top of this they've come out here and just like dug these up and I've seen the corn just dug up and fallen over or just chopped down right at the bottom and I don't know some of these have stayed coming back and whatnot and we'll see what happens that is I think is an acorn squash there then of course we got the the beans the pole beans so we got these trying to wrap around and latch on i thought that over there was a green bean but apparently is a pole bean it's probably mislabeled from the nursery let's see that's a uh, green bean right there as well as another what i thought was a green bean i guess is a pole bean uh, we're gonna see and then i've got all this over here is the swiss chard all going back in here as well and the kale up front and as you can see, see like yesterday I came in here and I just clipped off pieces of mint and just threw it down in here because it stinks and a lot of insects don't like it. Look how decimated some of these leaves. This kale has been just eaten up by things. And I actually clipped off a bunch of uh, this kale yesterday. I haven't figured out what's going on with my kale, but I get all this this white stuff on the, on the, uh, the leaves. And I'm not really sure exactly what this is yet or how to prevent it. I've just been so stinking busy. Uh, I actually just had my family in town. My parents came in town for a few days. And uh, then they just left. So I'm finally getting an opportunity to kind of get out here and do a little bit of other things. This is all squash. I think this is all yellow squash again, just like what was over there in those, bo in those uh, buckets by themselves. This is a zucchini. I got one, two, three zucchini. And then that back there is a honeydew melon. Um, and these pools, so I'll just kind of explain real quick. I was looking for, you know, more pots to try to grow things individually in, but pots are expensive. This area right here is just bad soil. It's very, very rocky, very nasty soil. Uh, so I didn't want to, you know, try to clear this out and grow anything there. So I decided to just get a couple of pools and they fit perfectly. So that's awesome. Um, over here, got may have explained this in a previous video but I basically have done okra uh, just about every other thing with the exception of this end of the yard so sugar snap pea okra sugar snap pea okra sugar snap pea okra uh, or okra over there and then we start cucumbers and then the okra that was there died so I put a tomato there and then cucumber okra 
cucumber, okra, all the way down. So the rest of this is, these are these Italian green frying peppers. I've never grown these before. I'm interested to see how they're gonna come out. All these little things in the front right here are what's called bunching onions. And I did break these up and put plant them individually. And they go down to right about there. And then around the bend over there. I didn't want to plant them too close to all of the uh, all of these right here are sugar snap peas and stuff. And I didn't want to get the onions too close to that in case they affected the flavor. And then uh, I do have some garlic interplanted that I managed to start from the store. And I know that this is not the time to really be planting garlic. Uh, there's another sprig of mint. Um, but I really do enjoy fresh garlic when it comes in. And I doubt that I'm going to have to store any of this. Once it does come in, it's just going to go directly into pickles or whatever else. These are old German tomatoes. They're some of my favorites. Um, you can hear I'm getting some sort of insect on here. So I'm going to nip that in the bud today. Um, but yeah, once again, just pepper, tomato, pepper and tomato tomato pretty much everywhere else you see these cages are all tomatoes and they are all just like over in those self-watering buckets i don't remember what was what from what got planted so um surprise <laughs> that's exactly what this is all going to be once these start coming in i have no idea and then these uh all these uh, sugar snap peas have finally started to come in this is like up to my chest yeah so these have gotten pretty tall and they're finally starting to bloom and I'm excited to have these come in. I know my girls are going to love them. Here's a few of them right here. This is not ready to be picked and eaten right here. So this is going to be awesome. It's going to go great in stir fry or anything else. And then uh, once again, these are tomatoes. And they seem like they're getting crowded out by the light. But um, I don't think that's really the case. I think that these are going to be just fine once they start growing up a little bit bigger. Uh, I, the, part of the reason that I interplanted everything with the peas is because peas are a nitrogen fixer and tomatoes feed on nitrogen. Ooh, look, there's a couple little suckers in there that I missed. So I'm going to get these, don't worry. Uh, but anyway, moving right along, the rest of everything else, I've got to start training these cucumbers. Like this one is kind of starting to go along the fence, so I'm going to start training these cucumbers to go up along the fence and I think I'm going to do like a zigzag pattern and just kind of take them back and forth up the fence and then over and then who knows, I might have to drag them over to these tomato, the tops of the tomato cages if they get too long, which I'm sure, certain that they will. I've seen these things grow incredibly long. Um, so in the backpack over here are, that in the very back is okra and then there was a cucumber there that failed and then there's another okra. And I never planted anything else where that cucumber was. There's a cucumber and next to a bean and uh yeah there's pumpkins back here those pumpkin pumpkin trying to give them lots of space and i got carrots interplanted some of these things i did plant from seed and they're they got planted kind of late so like right here all those cross-pollinated peppers that failed that from my last video uh, i didn't want to lose out on them from this for the season so i don't necessarily care if i get a whole lot of them to eat Mostly what I'm trying to do is uh, get them to come back for seeds for next year because I've been trying to, uh, you know, I actually really like the flavor of those cross-pollinated peppers. So I've just been trying to get them the desirable shape and everything year after year. So I'm just continuing to grow them year after year. I think this is the third season that they will be in. So once again, that is, uh, well that actually right there, I think that is a squash that over there is a ball melon so either that's a melon or a squash i can't remember for certain um, and <laughs> i feel bad for not being able to, re to remember but a lot of these are like kind of they're basically cucurbits or however you say that word they're all members of the cucumber family so that acorn squash right there was planted next to this three sisters method uh once again i think i have everything just way way too close i think this was supposed to be done in like a 10 square foot area and this is just way too close Got a little bit of lettuce here for my neighbor. She wanted that for her kid. And uh, got some more lettuce right here. These are some other watermelon on this side of the yard. So we're just gonna see how this is. This soil 
So what I do, what I like to go do, this pile of dirt right here is I just bulk soil. I went and picked up in my truck for like, I think it was like $30 a yard or something, garden soil mix from a local nursery. And this was at the end of that last pile. I didn't have very much soil left. So I mixed it with uh, old twigs from last year and sticks and a bunch of grass clippings. And at first I thought, I did not think that these things were gonna make it, but they're finally starting to come in and I'm happy to see that. And then along this year, along this side over here, this is more so kind of an experiment because nothing has ever grown over here. You see all this dirt patch, nothing's ever, the grass has never really grown over here. So we're just going to see what happens. But right here, uh, yesterday I had two really large suckers that I was finally able to attend to. And I just transplanted them yesterday evening. That's why they look really limp. Did not put anything on them besides just cutting them and moving them straight to the soil and watering. And I'm going to water them again here in a few minutes. But I'm expecting those to take off uh, pretty soon, probably within the next few days. These are more, well, let's see here. What is this? This is a ball melon. That is either the same thing or it's some other type of uh, squash, like acorn squash. <laughs> kind of the same thing back and forth here. I don't even remember what all these are. A lot of these, I've just been so busy and my neighbor was supposed to take care of labeling all of these things and she's been too busy. Um, so we just don't really know exactly what's what. Well, we'll find out. This right here is another, I think it's a melon. And we got more pumpkin. Pumpkin spread kind of far out. If you can see this like almost, probably about four, four and a half feet between those two plants. And then that dirt strip in the middle of all this is more carrots. I had so many carrot seeds, I just wanted to plant them out and see what, what would happen. And they are starting to come in. It's been hmm, probably a week and a half to two weeks. And then the rest of this is, I did kind of label these. So I got broccoli, cauliflower, broccoli, cauliflower. And you see how they look almost identical while they're growing. That's why I can't really tell what, what's what over there. And then there's a house I'm rehabbing, and uh, I found this there. I think my kids will like it. So I uh, brought this home. We're going to have to repaint that. So anyways, that is it for the survival garden update for 2020. Got a lot going on. I'm expecting a lot of this stuff to come in. I actually did just invest in a deep freezer, and I think that is a very wise investment for any of you out there who don't have one. They are hard to find. They're hard to get. I was able to find one on... A, uh, actually it's kind of a commercial supplying website I will put the link in the description below I didn't actually buy it from here I found my local Best Buy actually had a bigger one in stock um, and to buy from a commercial website you have to pay commercial shipping rates and delivering like on a truck and trailer so it's more expensive but they're like commercial grade quality freezers if you're interested in that I will leave a link in the description one thing I will do here in the future once things start to come in I really love to cook personally and uh, I will be doing some cooking videos on some of the stuff that comes fresh out of the garden. And I hope that you guys will like, subscribe, and stick around for that. And uh, love you all you guys. And I hope that you'll grow big, grow home, grow to save.